Welcome to our lecture online. Now let's take a look at a few of these transfer coefficients when we're dealing with convection currents and heat transfer through convection. Now here we have the same picture that we had on the previous video where we can see that heat transfers first through the air to get to the window. Then we have two window panes, air in between, and then through the air on the other side. We realized that we simply had to add up what we call the thermal resistances through each of the layers. But what controls the flow of the heat through these portions because of convection? Well, that depends on a lot of things. And so the heat conductivity constants, or in this case, the transfer constants, depend upon whether or not we're dealing with air or with water or some other gas or liquid, and what that liquid or that gas is doing. For example, in ambient air, the coefficient is somewhere between 1 and 20 watts per square meter per Celsius degree. And that's a huge range. With ambient air, we're talking about air that's not moving. So why can there be such a huge difference between those values? Well, it depends a lot upon what the temperature is, what the temperature difference is, what the surface is made out of, and so forth. So because of that, we do have a quite a range. Notice that these are experimentally derived values and also realize that these values depend on many, many parameters. So these are just approximate values that we tend to use under certain circumstances. Now, if we have free convection, of course, what's free convection mean? Well, free convection means that there's no force of air, so that it's basically the movement of heat due to the thermal action of the molecules in the gas. And if the temperature is 30 degrees centigrade, the number is around 5. Notice that 5 definitely falls well within the 1 to 20 range. Notice also that they're talking about the vertical plate because the plate can be vertical or the plate can be horizontal and does also make a difference with the orientation of the plate. And we'll show you that in some later videos. Notice that when we have forced convic uh, convection that the constant goes up. The conductivity will go up when we force airflow over or towards the surface. Now in this case it's low airflow. What, what we mean by low? Well, a very small gentle breeze across the surface, parallel to the surface. That's what we mean by airflow over the surface. Then it goes up from 5 to 10. What if we have moderate airflow? Now it goes from 10 to 100. Of course it depends what we mean by low and by moderate, but you can see as the airspeed increases, a flow of air across the surface, it will pick up a lot more heat, transfer or drop off a lot more heat onto the surface, depending upon what the temperature difference is. And you can see that it goes immediately from 10 to 100. Now those are not exact values. Again, these are approximate values. Forced convection, moderate airflow across a cylinder. It's about twice as much as it is across a flat surface. So when it goes across a cylinder, it bumps into the cylinder, goes around it, it draws more heat out of it, and the number goes up. Now if we talk about forced convection of moderate water flow in a pipe, it goes all the way up to 3,000. So when you want to cool things down and you flow a hot liquid or a warm liquid through a pipe, it will give off a lot of temperature to the pipe itself, or if it's hot outside and you have water flow inside the pipe, a lot, of, a lot of heat will go into the pipe. Not temperature, of course, but heat. And then finally, forced convection, moderate flow, but in this case it's boiling water inside a pipe, and notice it jumps all the way up to 50,000. That is a huge transfer heat because of boiling water. So if you want to transfer heat from inside a pipe to the outside, notice if you put boiling water to the pipe, there's a tremendous amount of heat transfer because of that boiling water will readily give heat off to the pipe around it. So notice that there's a huge variation. Also notice that these are very rounded numbers. And that the Notice that these are very rounded numbers as well because they're just approximate values, not exact values. We will learn how to calculate much closer to the actual values to considering all the various parameters that go into coming up with the transfer coefficients. And that is how it's done.